I was born in the midst of the 20th century's longest conventional war, a war that sent my mother's family fleeing from their hometown, a war that had my grandfather working in a tower that got hit with him passing away only weeks later, a war that had my parents running for cover every time the bomb sirens went off and escaping the capital city on New Year's Eve during the first year of my life. Yet, I do not stand in front of you here today as someone who knows war intimately or who spent a lifetime pursuing peace. What I do have some experience in is the field of innovation, working with senior leaders in the private, public, and civic sectors to reimagine the future of our world. So what I'd like to do today is put forward to you the idea of audacious peace and share with you three lessons I've learned in the work of innovation that might help us reimagine the future. Lesson number one, fall in love with the problem, not your solution. The definition of innovation is an invention that creates value. That seemingly simple definition raises two fundamentally big questions. What do we value and value for whom? Failing to ask big questions is probably one of the most common barriers to breakthrough innovation I see in the work I do. Take the example of car companies. They've spent decades investing in the smaller question of how do we make and sell the best and most cars. You look at the latest models, and they are literally computerized spaceships on four wheels. But the true customer problem is not buying a car that sits idle 90% of the time. The true customer problem is mobility, going from point A to point B. And that's why you see ride-sharing companies disrupting the status quo. Interestingly enough, Ford's CEO has recently come out to say Ford is shifting from being a car company to becoming a mobility company. I've also experienced this in my own life. For years going through the education system, I asked a smaller question of how do I get a better mark? It wasn't until later that I came to discover the big question of how do I take ownership of my own learning and my own success. When it comes to the world of peace building, what is it that we value most? Is it the absence of war? Is it the shortest path to end a conflict, even if the root causes are in address? In which parts of the world do we value peace more than others? Similarly, for whom are we truly creating value? Is it always for those most in need and most affected? Or is it sometimes more focused on the needs and demands of funders, governments, and if we're truly honest with ourselves, those of our own organizations? Asking big questions requires us to step back, to see the whole board, to question assumptions, and to ultimately fall in love with the problem, not our solution. Lesson number two, build at the intersection of yes and. We live in a world surrounded by models and systems that are rooted in either or thinking, either boldness or humility in character, either purpose or profit in organizations, either money or meaning in work, either left or right in politics. But the greatest innovations in our world happen at the intersection of seemingly opposing extremes. And so in the world of peace building, it means that we need to fundamentally redefine who is in the room, whose voices are not heard, who has power, and who doesn't have access. Lesson number three, start within. I see this so often, particularly in my work with the civic sector, where the organizations are so focused on the problems out there that they become blind sometimes to the manifestations of those very problems within. Take the example of a private family foundation. I was brought in by the third generation to help with strategic alignment. What became quickly clear was that the misalignment was about actually the fact that all of them were there out of obligation to the family and not because they wanted to manage a foundation. Nobody had wanted to be the first and perhaps the only person to bring this up. But once we created the space for them to look within, they realized that's how they all felt. And it didn't mean betraying the family legacy to bring in external support to help. 
I've also come to experience this in my own life intimately recently. One year and one week ago to the day, my father had an accident and became paralyzed for the rest of his life. The strength, courage, and tenacity with which he has gone about rebuilding, reimagining, and relearning the daily activities of life that most of us take for granted, and the notions of self-worth and independence, despite the social pressures and barriers, has been absolutely awe-inspiring. But perhaps the greatest lesson I've learned from him, relevant to the topic of today, is the importance of seeking and sowing inner peace. And so when it comes to the world of peace building, I believe we need to think of peace as an iceberg, where the visible tip above the water is systemic peace, the lack of which shows up in acts of violence, terror, and conflict around the world. But if we spend all of our time focusing on the tip, we risk wasting generations without ever moving the needle on the iceberg. Immediately below the water, the next layer is interpersonal peace. It's not in the media news headlines every day, but the lack of it shows up in our personal and professional relationships in the form of tension, arguments, and abuse. Take the example of violence against women, which is often described as the invisible war at home. And finally, at the very bottom of the iceberg is inner peace least visible of all the layers, but bubbling up and feeding directly to the, to the others, is the ability to find peace with the self, with our shortcomings, and with our identities. Falling in love with the problem, not our solution, helps us set our sight on the destination that matters most. Building at the intersection of yes and opens up a whole new set of possibilities. And starting within allows us to go directly to the core of the challenge at hand. They actually bring together the three ingredients of innovation, our heads to think bigger, our hearts to feel deeper, and our hands to build better solutions together. Each necessary, but only sufficient in holistic harmony. Perhaps the greatest lesson I've learned through having had the incredible opportunity and humbling opportunity of being here today, is the gut-wrenching reality check that even though I was born right in the midst of war, I have come to take for granted the rare gem that is peace in a city and a country I deeply love. I've come to learn that peace is not a constant, and peace achieved is not peace complete. Peace today is not peace tomorrow, and peace on the surface is not peace within. Therefore, it is up to each of us to accept the charge to become a peace champion. And particularly, given the unique opportunities and privileges we are afforded in this beautiful country of ours, it is our responsibility, perhaps greater than that of any other nation, to stand tall, to stand together, and to stand committed to building, fostering, and spreading peace in our own lives, in our homes, in our communities, in our neighborhoods, and around the world. Thank you, merci, and miigwech. <laughs>